Hey ladies, I'm your host Rebecca and my goal is to lead women towards faith and confidence through the bumpy roads of life. Welcome to the She Bold Podcast. Hey ladies and welcome back to the She Bold Podcast. Today we're going to continue on the toxic relationship subject because I feel like God is asking me to spend more time on this for the next few episodes. Um, So yeah. Red flags. We all know that red flags are, in other words, deal breakers, right? However, as easy as it sounds to see them, some of us, and me first, been through that, (laughs) are still very blind or in total denial when they show up in someone we like or love. Um, Before I continue, though, I got to say this. Be careful about what you consider a red flag. Because, for example, some may think that someone who takes a long time to answer your text is a red flag. And it could be. But you can think that this man is not for you just because of that. Because behind it, there will always be a reason. And sometimes it is related to you and it is a red flag. But sometimes it has nothing to do with you and it's not even intentional. Don't compare who you're dating to who your friend is dating. Her path and your path are totally different. There's red flags that for her were definitely a warning to get away, but those same red flags might have a different meaning in your life. But that you can only know if God has spoken to you about it and maybe told you he's making you go through this and make you stronger, wiser, so many other reasons. And that's just one example that I'm giving. There could be so many other red flags You cannot compare your love story to other people's love story. Some people might, well, to you, they might have it easy. But in the background, they did have to go through a rough path too. So you don't know what challenges, what mountains you're going to have to go through before reaching the end goal, which is the relationship and the marriage that God has for you. So don't put, how can you say that? Like, don't put... A, your future relationship in that kind of box of like oh it has to be like this because that's what people say it's good it has to be like that because that's what community says is a good relationship no your relationship has to be the way that god intended it to be and you cannot change the way that it's supposed to happen maybe you want it to happen quickly maybe you want it to happen slowly but at the end of the day it's god who decide it's god who has the control of the timing And you cannot switch that around. No matter how much you try to take control, at the end of the day, God has the final say. And I believe that if you are in alignment with God and you truly seek him and have a relationship with him, he will guide you and give you the discernment to catch the right red flags. And like I said, some may still be red flags, but he's still the man God wants for you. However, God might not be done working through him. You never know. And I don't say that to make you stay in whatever toxic relationship you might be in. Pay attention. You first got to seek God and be connected to him and then listen to what he tells you. Don't just assume that a man is meant for you. Never, ever do that. You will waste your time and you will get hurt. But before you even start talking to someone or going on a date, I believe you should ask God for approval first. Because if you're at a point of red flags, that means you probably skipped a few steps when you went in that relationship. And when I say a few steps, it's, for example, um, asking the right question, not only to God, but to that person. And also praying the right way, um, having a specific relationship with God and all of that. Why do we all why do we always allow ourselves to reach a point of no return? before becoming aware of what's happening i heard a pastor say once don't ever let your emotions get in the way of what god is trying to do in your life yes you might have fallen in love and love is a powerful feeling but god's love and his will is more important don't think that you won't ever fall in love again that is a straight lie okay When you let God write your own love story, you won't ever be able to explain the feelings that you're going to have because they will be so strong and out of your control. Don't forget that at the end of the day, God created love. God created marriage. Like He created it all. And whatever he creates is perfect. So don't think that 
just because you went through a toxic relationship and you you've been hurt or or whatever it is that you went through that God is not going to be able to restore your heart that God is not going to be able to bring back life into your heart and make you love again and not I'm not talking about the love that you experienced before I'm talking about a different kind of love that only God can bring to your life your life has so much purpose and so does your love life who you get to marry is important they can either make you or break you you don't want to look back and think oh I should have known I should have seen the signs pay attention to what the spirit is showing you he will speak to you and warn you or he will guide you in the right direction. Don't try to do it on your own. Stop focusing on what you think you want in a man, but instead ask God, Lord, bring me the man that you want for me because you know better than myself what I need. You know the desires of my heart. You know my strengths and my weaknesses. Therefore, you know who will be compatible to me and who will bring me closer to your kingdom and not further away. Erase the list I have made in my mind and write your own list for my future husband. Ladies, you really got to let go of that control and give it to God. You will never ever be able to do what he can do because only he has the power to do that. So stop focusing on what you can do because at some point you're going to reach a point that you have nowhere else to go and that you have nothing else to like you just feel like what else can I do and that's when you're gonna look up to God and be like God you know what I'm done I give it all to you but don't reach that point I'm telling you to give it to God as of now before you even reach the point of red flags before you even reach the point of hurt just give it to God and say you know what God I'm not gonna go in this relationship if you don't approve it I'm not gonna start dating if you don't say it's time today because at the end of the day you're going to experience red flags. I'm not saying, okay, let me repeat that. <laughs> At the end of the day, you might experience red flags, but if you do things the right way, you might not even have to go through all of that pain because you, you told God, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to let you guide me and let you tell me when it's time to move. Because yes, the man, for example, might have issues and, you know, toxic relationship are not only for men some women are very toxic okay trust me <laughs> some women are very very toxic and we have to stop thinking also that oh only the man has to change no 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 we have our we have our ways and our um, habits and our attitude and so many things that we need to change also we need to stop thinking that we're perfect and that you know oh he just needs to get used to me i know that these days people um are very much like oh you know love yourself uh you know you're worthy and stuff like you are worthy you need to love yourself but don't love yourself to an extent that you think you're perfect okay because that becomes pride and at the end of the day pride is not from god so just let god tell you and show you your true self and say god tell god to show you what needs to be changed in you because sometimes i feel like people and we're, we're just scared to ask God, you know, if there's something inside of me, something that you see is not right, is not correct, or is not aligned to your will for my life, remove it. We often are scared to pray those kind of prayers because we're like, oh my God, what if he removes the thing that I like the most? Or what if he removes this and blah, blah, blah. And we're scared of changes and we're scared of other people's comments on uh, on ourselves on our personality but you know at the end of the day you just want to be who God wants you to be okay so make sure to have those conversations with him and seek his will and seek what he wants for you what he wants you to be as a woman of God as a wife as a mom as whoever he called you to be and stop focusing on what community is showing you stop focusing on what people say you should be but focus on what God says you should be Okay, so the, this is my word for you today. And I pray that, you know, whoever is going through a toxic relationship or either, whoever almost went in it or whoever went through it can truly heal from it, can truly repent from it, and can truly learn also to do, not only to do better, but to tell women around them to do better also. Because we're not alone. Sometimes... There's some women who don't even talk about it, but they've been through it or they are going through it right now. But just to have someone by your side or someone to 
to talk to you or to to reach out to you and give you those advice can change so much. So that's why I feel like God is calling me to spend more time about the relationship subject because I feel like part of my testimony, well, there's a big, we, I got testimonies after testimonies, okay? <laughs> but I feel like a big part of my testimony, especially for the, um, not the past few years, but because I've been single for what, for like four four years now, almost five. And before those five years, it's just been a whole roller coaster of relationships after relationships. And I feel like I've learned so much from it. And God made me go through so much healing that I'm at a point right now that I want to help other women. I want to help whatever age they're at, whatever um, season of their lives they're at, like whatever I've been through. I don't see it as pain anymore. I don't see it as, oh my God, it was so bad. No, I see it as like, you know what? I have to go through that because if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't have been able to talk the way that I talk right now and help the way that I help right now. And, you know, people coming to me and asking me questions that I would not be able to answer if I didn't go through what I've been through. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I'm not saying, oh, God made me go through that. No, but God allowed me to go through that because at the end of the day, God will take what the enemy meant for evil and he will turn it for his good all the time. So whatever the enemy was trying to do with my past, at the end of the day, he did not succeed because I chose God at the end of the day. And I chose to switch my life around and to restore my life and to give it all to God and give him all the control. And now I want to make sure that I do it the right way. I want to make sure that whatever I do is for God. And I want to make sure that people know about that, that whatever I do is not for me, but it's for God at the end of the day. All right, ladies. So anyways, I hope you like this one and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.